Hi there, how are you? Uh, this is Lois Gidika. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, my apologies, I'm still riding my cold. Uh, so anyway, uh, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for subscribing and thank you for sharing my videos. I really appreciate it. Uh, as a continuation to our series about life in Canada, we said that we shall be exploring the various provinces here in Canada and the lucky province to start us off is Alberta. And guess what? I live in Alberta. This is my home province. Uh, so I may have a few biases, but I'll try a lot not to misrepresent. Um, Alberta, uh, I'm just going to give a brief da description there about Alberta. And uh, as you know, Canada has 10 provinces and uh, three territories. And uh, it's divided into five sections. And these are the Atlantic uh, provinces, the Northern Territories, the West Coast, the Central Canada, and the Prairies. And Alberta is in the Prairies together with um, Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Alberta is home to about 4.3 million people, uh, according to the statistics done last year. Uh, this province is more close to the west coast because it's between Saskatchewan and British Columbia. Uh, this is uh, the capital city of this province is Edmonton and uh, the main thing that Alberta is known for is energy, oil and gas. So it's also known as the Canada Energy Province. Um, so just a little bit about the economic drive here because we are already talking about oil and gas. Historically, the main economic drive in this province has been oil and gas. And uh, unfortunately, things have been changing uh, because of uh, poor economic uh, weather and uh, here, in this, uh, here in this province. A lot of uh, oil and gas uh, companies have been closing shop and moving to the south. And um, so there's been, we've been in an economic downturn for a while. When I came uh, to this country, the, this province was just... Uh, past the boom and I understand that during the boom this place was was fantastic like there was a lot of money changing hands uh, you could apply for a job in the morning and get it in the afternoon and people didn't really care about experience anyway things have changed not so bad things are not really bad but uh, we've seen a lot of challenges with the oil and gas industry however there's also a very fast growing uh, industrial and service economy uh, so that is also another economic drive for this um, for this province. Uh, another uh, not really glorified uh, economic drive for this province, but it is equally important, is farming. Uh, and Alberta is known for beef. It's also known for canola and wheat. Uh, there may be other provinces that do better with that, but yeah, we do that. Um, that said, uh, that is about the economic drive. Uh, when I talked about uh, the dwindling uh, economy in this province, that means that unemployment rate has risen up uh, in this province. Uh, in the past few years, we've seen a rise in unemployment with every year, and currently that is standing at 7%, uh, with an increase of 06 in the last one year. So before, before we had the economic downturn, there was a very high demand for, for workers, and there was very low unemployment rates, which meant that the salaries here were very high. It was very competitive. Uh, currently, the medium, uh, the median wage here. I don't want to give it a number because that really depends on provi uh, on the city, and we shall be talking about the cities uh, next. Uh, but the low, there is a minimum wage in Alberta, which is fifteen dollars per hour, and that is for most employees. And when I say most employees, it's because uh, people like students don't earn that. They have their own minimum wage, which I think is about $13. Uh, so we are really hoping that uh, the economy is going to, to turn for the better, especially when we get a pipeline. So we are really hopeful. All in all, this is a beautiful place with hardworking people, and there's a lot of hope for Alberta. Um, weather. <laughs> Things you need to consider when, when settling here, it's weather. Please, I have told you time and again, don't come to Canada for the weather. Please, if you're really thinking and worried about the weather, 
thrive where you are. Don't come to Canada for the weather. Uh, Alberta can get very brutal winters. Um, it can get up to minus 30 right now. It's very, 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 very cold. Uh, you don't want to leave your house or your car. But you know what? It's, uh, it's what it is. Uh, winter usually starts practically, not theoretically. Uh, winter starts around October and can last until April, right? Uh, in between, some months can be quite mild, but then January gets quite brutal. January and February can get quite brutal. Uh, that not, notwithstanding, uh, it's still a beautiful place to live in. We love winters. You can always find things to do here in winter uh, because, you know, you have, to, you have to live and you have to adapt. Um, so when I talked about low unemployment rate, uh, I'm not trying to scare away immigrants because I know for an immigrant that is one thing that you're worried about. Uh, am I going to get a job? Uh, I can say that right now it's not the best place uh, that you can get a job very fast. However, that said, it is still easy to get transitional jobs. These are starter jobs uh, that you can step into while you're working to get your dream job. Uh, the jobs which are highly affected right now, they are in the oil and gas uh, sector. Uh, however, you can get uh, jobs in, the, in healthcare, you can get uh, jobs in the other service industries. So this is not uh, meant to scare you away. This is still a very attractive province, province for, for immigrants. Uh, and when I talk about uh, immigrants, uh, when I talk about immigration, Alberta has been a very popular immigration destination for immigrants, especially with the rise of provincial nomination programs. I remember I just did a video that talked about uh, the PNPs in Alberta, and I talked about uh, the Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program. You should be looking at that because that has become uh, very popular. Um, Alberta right now it's also participating in the rural northern immigration program. I have also done a video on that uh, and this is a community in southern Alberta called Claire's Home. Uh, that is about south of Calgary and uh, I, I'm not yet talking about Claire's Home because they haven't started taking uh, applicants. While they do that I'll do a video for that. Uh, you also want to know how much taxes. You can't believe how many people ask me about taxes in Alberta. So Alberta is still among the lowest taxed provinces. Uh, all we do pay is GST. We pay a GST of 5% on everything apart from food. We do not pay GST on food. Uh, we also pay carbon tax uh, in um it's, it's, it's minimal, but we pay it in, uh, when we are gassing, when we're getting gas, and in our home bills, that is uh, for heating purposes. So that, those are the main, uh, the main taxes that we pay here. About crime, uh, people are also worried about crime. <laughs> uh, it's relatively low. Uh, however, I, I must mention that with the rise of unemployment, we've seen that go up. And when I say about crime, this is in Canadian perspective. This is not in Nairobi perspective. <laughs> yeah, so crime is quite low. Uh, still, most of the crimes that you're going to find in the city, uh, in the province, are mostly targeted. And when I say targeted, then that means that they come from drugs and gang-related activities. Uh, but it's still quite very low. Uh, I know as an immigrant, you're worried about the cost of living because, come on, you're new in the country, maybe you don't have a job, and also maybe you didn't bring a lot of money to spend on uh, while you get your dream job. So, the cost of living here is relatively, it, it's not so high, I cannot say that it's so high. I'll be talking about each individual city, and that is going to give you a, a, a broader perspective on that. Uh, but uh, I just want to say that uh, you can rent a house when you're newly immigrated here. In most places, you can rent a house, uh, like a one-bedroom apartment or even a two-bedroom apartment uh, or townhouse. You can get that for maybe $1,100. Uh, yeah, but then again, that is also going to be very dependent on, uh, on the city, uh, so some of these cities are going to be expensive because they are major cities and smaller cities are going to be cheaper. Um, education. 
Education is also another big factor that you need to be considering when coming to Alberta. That could be for you or for your children. Uh, for the kids here, we have something called K-12. That is from kindergarten to grade 12. And this is free education uh, that is provided by the province. Um, Alberta has some of the best post-secondary education uh, institutions. And that is some of the best universities here. We have uh, University of Calgary, we have University of Alberta, we have Mount Royal University, we have University of Lethbridge, uh, Athabasca University, and these are just some of the, of the universities. We have a lot of universities here. We also have community colleges like Bow Valley, and we have uh, the technical uh, schools like SAIT, that is Southern Alberta Institute of Technology, or the NATE, the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology. So these are just some of them. Uh, the cost of university here, uh, if you're a resident, that is a permanent resident or uh, a citizen, you can expect to pay around $5,700 per year. Uh, that is for post-secondary education. Again, that is going to be dependent on uh, the university. This is still uh, on the higher side in some of these provinces. You're going to find that some provinces you can find uh, cheaper education. But then again, I said this is going to be dependent on the kind of university, whether it's a major university or it's a community college. So it doesn't necessarily have to be 5700 per year. Uh, for the schools, for the, for the elementary school, when I talked about the K-9, we have uh, two systems. We have the public schools and uh, we have a few private schools. And when I talk about uh, public schools, we have the Catholic schools and now the regular public schools, the only difference, they have high quality education, extremely high quality education. Majority of people here in Alberta, they take, uh, they take their kids to these public schools. The only difference there is that in the Catholic schools, they offer religion. And in the public schools, religion is not part of that. So if you guys are not Christians, uh, you may opt to take your kids to public schools. All in all, they have some of the best programs and very high quality education. Again, as you know, as in every city, there are people who just have a lot of money and it's just how life is. So some of these people do prefer to take their children to private schools and uh, the cost in these private schools is variable. Some of them you can pay up to $30,000 a year. So that is a personal choice that uh, you may want to take. The other main thing to consider here is healthcare. And uh, as with all the provinces here in Canada, uh, Alberta offers Alberta offers a universal health care that is funded by the taxpayers' money. So this offers all the most basic services in uh, in health. And when I say most basic services, is when you get sick, you can see your family doctor and you're not going to be paying anything. You can walk to the emergency and you're not going to pay anything. So you're going to be treated and give, be given all the services for free, including uh, childbirth. Uh, so those are really, really, really good things uh, that, that you can get. The only things that you need to pay for that is not paid by the, uh, by the universal health care are uh, things like dental, optical, plastic surgery, you know, massage, physiotherapist. Those ones are not paid for by Alberta Health. Uh, usually what happens, most employers, they offer extended health services and those extended health services, that varies by employer, that is now where you can get... Um, uh, provision for massage, hair, you know, braces for the children, whatever you want to do that is outside of the basic health services. Uh, another important thing to consider is culture, the Alberta culture. Uh, funny, when I talk about Alberta culture, did I say that Alberta has 4.3 million people and it's quite diverse? So a lot of people here uh, came from uh, Great Britain, uh, Germany, Ireland, Ukraine, and France. And we now, because uh, immigration has been evolving, we have very big communities of people from South Asia and China. Uh, a lot of uh, majority of Alberta identifies as Christians. However, this province is quite uh, secular and we have representation from all other religions and that is Hindu, Muslim, Jews, and Buddhist. Uh, on the culture, as I was talking about that, uh, here we have two main things. Because of winter 
and summer. In the winter season, hockey is a big deal. Hockey here is life. So, and all the other activities that revolve around ice. So there's going to be skiing, there's going to be skating. Uh, in summer months, we have a lot of activities, uh, but the main one is the rodeos. There's a big cowboy culture in Alberta. So there's going to be a lot of festivals uh, around that. And uh, because of the diverse culture, we also have a lot of festivals that showcase the different uh, communities and cultures here in Calgary, uh, in, in Alberta, I mean. Um, I want to say that the main cities in uh, Alberta, we have two main cities. We have Calgary and we have Edmonton. And these two cities carry the biggest uh, part of the bulk of the population is in uh, Calgary and Edmonton. That said, we also have smaller cities and a lot of them, but I'm just going to mention five of the bigger ones. And that is Red Deer. Excuse me. We have Red Deer, we have Lethbridge, Fort McMurray, Medicine Hat, and Grand Prairie. Uh, a little bit about the government. I'm not going to dwell, dwell so much on that. But Alberta's government is currently conservative against the majority of Canada, which is uh, quite liberal. Uh, that said, because of the many natural resources in this, uh, in this province, uh, the government is able to provide high quality education, healthcare, and other vital services. So that is what I want to talk about today uh, for Alberta. I don't think I've left anything out. If I have left anything out, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be saying that. Oh, you know what, actually, <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I want. I may want to just say this. When we go to healthcare, and I'll make a video of the reasons why you want to come to Canada. One of the things that we really enjoy here uh, is maternity leave. And maternity leave here now is 18 months. Yes, so you have a choice of either a year or 18 months, and that is a big deal for people, especially people who have young families or people who are planning to start families. So with that said, I think uh, my video has grown a little longer than I expected. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, thank you for sharing my video. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I'll be making more videos uh, that, uh, that cover in uh, areas of your interest. Okay, thank you so much. Have a good night. See you at uh, my next video. Bye now.